Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Adara and in this retool tutorial, we're going to build a simple app that reads and writes from an API endpoint. So let's get started. First, we're going to go into our retool instance and we're going to connect that API endpoint. If you have one already, go into your resources tab. The resources are any database, any API endpoint, or any other data source that you can connect to retool out of the box. REST API endpoints are some of the most popular ones. So when you click this, you'll be able to see the configuration options here from naming it to entering the base URL, adding the parameters, headers, and any kind of custom authentication that you may need. Now, some of you are probably wondering, I don't have an API endpoint. What am I gonna do? Don't worry, we actually have a REST API generator that is meant to be for demo purposes only. So please do not put production data in here because that is not secure. But for the purposes of testing out Retool or testing out an app, maybe mocking something together, uh, feel free to use our REST API generator. I'll drop the link in the description. But essentially this models an API endpoint that we can use for applications. So let's just say we're creating an admin panel or an internal tool to update customer data um, we can specify the columns here, the data type on the right, and then we can see a preview of what that data looks like. So some options here is things like names, uh, or I guess people attributes, name, let's just call this name. Let's add another column called email. Oops, people, email, let's just say phone number. Um, oops, or uh, struggling with this phone number and um let's just add credit card sure why not okay so we have some basic data here all we have to do uh is we can give this uh, api name or rows if we want but we'll just leave the defaults here and let's click generate api and now we can use this as an endpoint so all we have to do is copy paste this base url and then go back to our resource and plug it here. And then let's just call this like demo my customer data. And then let's just say for the retool tutorial, create resource. Perfect. Now that the resource is created, we can save a few steps by clicking this create an app button. And we're gonna save this app into, oops, my folder. And then let's just call this Retool Tutorial API. And this takes us to the main Retool App Builder view. I'm gonna just move this to the side here. And we can see that the Retool um, app has changed a little bit since the last tutorial. So I'll just walk you through some of the key changes, but essentially the canvas is still the same. It's sitting in the middle right here. And now everything has for the most part been moved to the left-hand side. So if we click this plus button in the upper left-hand corner, this gives us the components that we want to work with. So for the purposes of this example, again, I usually like having a table with my user data and then a detail view on the right-hand side. Usually I like having that inside of a container because the container makes it nice and neat. And then I like to put some components here to edit that data and write back to my table. So a text input field, uh, is a good component to have and then a button as well. And what's nice about this new uh, layout and some of the improvements here is we can actually click this plus button to add additional components into our canvas without having to navigate back and forth. So just minor things here to save some steps. So now we have a basic UI for our example uh, admin app. Let's have the data start to flow into the table. So to do that, now that we've used our components, uh, we're gonna to navigate to the code bar, which is on the left, and then we're gonna write a query here. And then this resource query is going to hit that API endpoint that we created. So I think it was called uh, demo rest API. And then we just click save and run. And we can see it's hitting this endpoint and it is returning a response. So all we have to do now is connect this query into our table. So we're gonna click table one. We see, oops, um, we're gonna click table one and then we're gonna open up the inspector here. And instead of demo data, we'll want to connect this to 
query one. And already we can see the um, customer data here. Now, I think what's interesting about this is it's not showing everything, name, ID, phone, email, query one, demo REST API. Oh, maybe that wasn't the one that I, this is the one I wanted. Okay, let's save and run this. We updated query one and now we're seeing the data as expected. Perfect. So let's continue building out this app by having the right side model some of the data in the table. The way we are going to do it is I usually like to um, have the container title be the person's name or something like that. To do that, we're going to use our double curly braces. Everything in between the double curly braces gets interpreted as JavaScript. So here we're just going to say, give me whatever is in table one dot um, selected row, and then we'll just put name. And then here, let's just say this is a way for us to update the email uh, of the user. Let's say we're building like a customer support tool and we need some way to, you know, update their emails. We're going to follow the same um, format here. This will be email. And then let's call this an update email button. So again, this is a very simple uh, application that as you can imagine, the data here can be arbitrarily complex as can the right hand side, depending on what you need to build and see. But now what we need to do is create the right back query to this API endpoint. And so we'll just use this query too that we conveniently created on accident earlier. And we'll just say demo, um, we'll just find our endpoint here. Uh, what did I call this? Apologies, my customer data. There we go. Now, instead of a get request, we are going to patch this endpoint and we're going to pass in here the value of the object that we're editing, the ID of the object that we're editing. And to do that, we're going to use double curly braces and we're going to, again, pass back the tables, select a row, that ID. And um, let's rerun this query so I can see what's in my table. My table one is not running. Um, uh, apologies, this should say query one, great. Now in query two, when I select a row and mouse over, I should be able, perfect. Okay, now I'm seeing that it's actually going to pass back um, the ID of this row of data that I've selected. And in the body of the JSON, let's say I only wanna modify the email of the user. I'm gonna select email and then here I'm going to pass back whatever is in text input one dot value. Great. And then on submit, I want to fire off a success handler here. And I'll specifically want to run query one again to refresh the table. And then I'll want to run or just fire off some confetti because that's fun for demos. And then I'm going to save this and uh, connect this query two to my button. And so this button on the right hand side here has event handlers. Some of the event handlers include uh, running a query, firing off a workflow, going to another URL. So lots of options to explore, but let's just go ahead and fire off query two. And that's it for that. So assuming uh, we've set up everything correctly, uh, all we have to do uh, is test the app now. So let's just say, oh, Adrian's Email is actually adrian at gmail.com. I'm going to click update email and it will fire off the confetti and update it at the REST API endpoint here. All right, that's it for this retool tutorial on how to read and write from an API endpoint, as well as an intro to our REST API generator, which again should be used for demo purposes only. Do not store your real data here. Um, hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments what kinds of tutorials you want to see, uh, and I'm all ears to make more of these for you all. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.